This one halacha uh, in the Parashat Shavua that we're going to read Parashat Hashem Parashat Vayichi, we learn about the two shevatim, the shevet Zebulun and the shevet Yisachar. Zebulun lechof yamim yishkon. Zebulun was the tribe that was involved in shipping business and uh, merchandise from the waters and selling them. Yisachar was the tribe that devoted themselves to the study of Torah. And as she tells us that there was a shutafut. There was a partnership between Zivulun and Yisachar. Zivulun would make the money and they would support Yisachar in order to allow Yisachar to study Torah. Uh, this is also alluded to in Zotah Beracha. When Moshe Rabbeinu blessed the Shevatim, he said, Semach Zivulun besetecha. The Yisachar bo'ahalecha. The reason why Zebulun can be happy when he goes to business because he's supporting Yisachar who's sitting in the oil Torah. And from this became the famous shutafut that we know as Yisachar Zebulun. We have somebody that has some money and he supports a Tamid Hacham to study and they make this shutafut. The poskim say it's lab davka Yisachar Zebulun, which means let's say you come from Shevet Naftali. Can Shevet Naftali make a deal with uh, Shevet uh, Dan? Of course, Yisachar Zebulun is only the mashal that the Torah gives, but it applies to any tribes that want to support one another. The question that we discuss today is a very fundamental question. Normally when we say shutafut, shutafut means 50-50, which means that it seems that Zebulun, who goes to work, has to give 50% of his earnings to Yisachar, and Yisachar, in turn, gives back 50% of his learning to Zebulun. That's the transaction. It's a shutafut. Which means, if Zebulun makes $100 million, he has to give Yisachar $50 million, even though he doesn't need $50 million. But shutafut is a shutafut. It has to be half, and then he gets back half his Torah. Is that the truth? There's two great rabbis that hold of that opinion. That's the opinion of the Shach. Sifte Kohen in Siman Resh Memvav says the Shutafut of Yisachar Zebulun is Hatsi of the Maskoret of Zebulun. And that's also the opinion of Rabbeinu Haim ben Atar, Allah Shalom, the Ola Haim Akadosh, in Parashat Kitisa, and the Pasuk Ze, Yitenu, Kola Oved, Allah Pekodim, Mahasita Shekel, Beshekel Akodesh. He brings over there the concept of Yisachar Zebulun, and he says, they give half of their uh, uh, profits, what they make, in order to support uh, Yisachar. However, I must point out that not everybody agrees with this. For example, the great Rabbi Rav Hida in Mahazik Beracha says, no, what Yisachar has to get from Zebulun is enough to live. You don't have to give him half the profit. And what's the logic? Without Zebulun, Yisachar will not be able to learn. The example he says is, let's say you have a, 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 a young man, he's not able to learn all day long. He needs to make Parnasa. So Zebulun goes to Yisachar and says, listen, I want you to study all day long. How much you need to live? He says, to live? I need $50,000 a year. He says, good. If I give you $50,000 a year, you won't go to work? No, I won't go to work. I'll sit and learn all day long. Now he does says, that's Yisachar Zebulun. Even though Zebulun's making $100 million, he gives him $50,000, he allows him to learn. Which means, the logic over here is, it's not that Zebulun has to give him half his profit. He just has to give him enough that without that money, he wouldn't be able to learn. Therefore, that siyua, that help, is considered as if you get half the profits. And I have a proof to this. The proof that we brought is the Gemara Sota Dav Chavav. The Gemara says over there, or Chaf, Chaf Alef. The Gemara says, if there's a sota, she has to drink the waters. So the Gemara says that sometimes the waters will not work immediately. Why not? The Gemara says, Im yesh la zechut, tola. If she has a zechut, the waters will be suspended. So the Gemara says, zechut demai. What type of zechut does she have? The Gemara says, maybe you're going to tell me zechut Torah. Lady study Torah. The Gemara says, ladies are not obligated to study Torah. 
את ביניכם, ביניכם ולא בנותיכם. So you can't tell me זכות תורה. Maybe it's not obligated to study Torah. Maybe you're going to tell me, oh, she's not obligated as a מצווה ועושה, but maybe she's obligated as a אינו מצווה. She's not obligated, but she gets credit. Because that's not considered a big מצווה, אינו מצווה. Therefore, it cannot be זכות תורה. Then the Gemara says, no, she has the זכות of the Torah. Where? She's not obligated to learn. Because she helps her husband and she helps her children. After all, the lady helps her husband, she lets her husband go study Torah, and she supports him. And she also, like the Gemara Berachot says, she takes the kids to the yeshiva, and she brings them home. So the Gemara says, that's considered zikhut Torah. And that's considered as if she's mitzvah ve'oseh. And that's considered as if she has an equal part in the learning of her husband and the learning of her children, which they are mitzvah ve'oseh. And she gets that credit, even though she's not uh, uh, giving half of her profits to the husband. She's not giving half of profits to the... She's helping. So you see that anybody helps somebody else study Torah, you become a partner. So then with the same way, you don't have to give half the profits to, 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 to Yisachar. As long as you're enabling them, that's considered enough. And that's the halakha. Halakha, you can make Yisachar Zebulun uh, contract, not with Hatsi uh, Hasachar, uh, Ela with enough to support. The question then is, what happens to the Tamid Hakam? I once asked this question to Hakam Baruch Alaba Shalom. Somebody once came to me when I was young and offered me Yisachar Zebulun. Eventually, he changed his mind, even before he started, but it was a good idea. It was an Anyway, he, he came to me, and he said, I want to support the rabbi, and we'll make Hatsi Sakhar, and I get half the re- uh, reward. I went to my rabbi, Hakam Baruch, because he taught me that when a person is married, he gives half the reward to his wife. So I said, my wife is going to get half the reward. The other half goes to Zivulun, I'm going to go to Gehenna, and they're going to sit in there again. I, I studied my whole life, and they're going to go to Gehenna, and I'm going to sit there. What happens with me? So Acham Baruch Alev HaShalom answered me, and he said, no, the Haida writes, V'im sakhiru ba b'scharo. On that pasuk, Rav Haida explains, V'im sakhiru, if somebody's hiring you to learn, ba b'scharo, you come with your full reward. Hashem gives half from his otzav. It doesn't take away from the Tabir Acham. The Akram gets full reward on his learning. What about the half? Bore Olam has a otzar. If ta Hashem nechat otzar o atov. Bore Olam will take half the amount and give it to the wife and half the amount to give it. But the Tamir Hakam Sakhar is Sakhar Mushlam. The last Hiddush over here is, the question is, if let's say a person makes this contract with Yisachar and he's supporting Tamir Hakam or maybe even few Tamir Hakamim, which is a big zikhut, he gets credit for this. The question is, does he have to learn himself? Does this exempt him? Can I come along and say, Baruch Hashem, I'm supporting Tabidi Hachamim, and therefore I'm off the hook? It seems not. Because Shuhan Aruch writes in Siman Lesh Membab that who should make a, 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 this contract of Yisachat Zebulun? Somebody that doesn't have the ability to learn, or somebody that's Tarud B'Tirdot Hazman, that cannot come and study for a long time, so therefore, he wants to connect himself to the Muda Torah. Let him do Yisachar Zebulun. But Baran doesn't say whoever wants to get rid of the Hayyum of Tamu Torah. All he says is somebody doesn't have the time to study the amount that he would like to. Therefore, nobody has the exemption. Let him study five minutes a day, Lefahot. Let him study a half hour a day. Let him study Sunday. He cannot come along and say, I'm supporting. Supporting only exempts you from studying the whole day. But he has to carve out a time in order to study it. Even though he's busy, I once heard from Rabbi David Abu Hasera from Nahariya. He once explained on the, on the question that they're going to ask in 120 years. Kavata etim la Torah. The first question they ask is Nasata venatata ve'emuna. We are honest in business. And then they ask Kavata etim la Torah. So we always learned Kavata etim means that you fix time to the study of Torah. But the end of the Gemara Baba Metziah says on the Pasuk Vekoveya kovehem nafesh. In that Gemara, the word koveya means to steal, to rob. Rabbi David said that everybody is busy. Nobody has time. Kavata etim means that you steal time for the study of the Torah. If a person doesn't steal the time, he's not going to have the time. The Tirdot Azman will keep him busy on errands and on obligations and different social responsibilities. So therefore, everybody has to be a gozen. And they're going to ask you, Kavata etim matua, did you steal? So we added to the Hadush and we said the following. The first question they're going to ask the guy, Nasata bin Atata bi'imunah, 
did you make an honest Yisachar Zivulun business deal? Were you fair with the, with the, with the, with the Yisachar? Did you pay him on time? Did you give him the... Nasata Benatata means our business is the business of Emuna. Emuna means Emuna Tabit Achamim. Nasata Benatata means did you make a Yisachar Zivulun? You say, yes, I did. But the next question is, but Kavata Adim Torah, even though you made Yisachar Zivulun, they're still going to ask him, Kavata Adim? So I was busy. We know everybody's busy. But Gazalta, did you steal time from your busy schedule in order to study Torah? So therefore it's clear that even the Zivulun that's supporting the Yisachar must g- grab some of his time and allot it an earmark for the study of Torah. Finally, the Botai as a bonus. I'll tell you what I saw once from a great rabbi from uh, Tiberia, of Haim Abu Afia, Allah be shalom, said a tremendous hintush. Akam brings it in Yabiya Omer. He says that there's great benefits of Yisachar Zevunun. One of the benefits is truly incredible. And it's hard to believe it, and I cannot even explain how it works. But this is what Haim Abu Afia said. He said, We know that one of the advantages of studying Torah is Torah protects a person from the Yetzir Allah. Marati Yetzirara, Marati no Torah Tablin. The Torah is a protector from the evil inclination. Haim Abu Lafia said that even the Zivulun that supports, when Yisachar is learning, he also gets the same protection from the Yetzirara, even though he's not in the Bet Midrash. And that's the way he explains the Pasuk. Semach Zivulun Besetecha. Zivulun, when you go out to work, you can be happy. The Yetzirara is not going to bother you, even though there's temptations where the Zivulun is. He's in the street, he's in the different places, he, he sees things, he's with uh, different different ish- situations that come up. The Torah says, Sema'a zivulun besetecha. You know why? The Yetzirah is not going to bother you. The Yisachar go alecha. Because just like the Torah protects Yisachar, the support also receives that same segula of Torah magna u matzla. The Torah also is going to protect. So therefore, Rabotai, if we would really believe in this concept of Yisachar zivulun, we really would have, uh, uh, and we had you don't need to have a lot of money. You just need uh, enough money to support a scholar to sit and study all day long. This clearly would be money well spent and he would get the uh, credit as if he studied uh, at least half a day uh, according to the understanding of the Hachamim.